Welcome back to episode three of It's Not About The Bike. Well, it kind of is about the bike. But anyway, in this video series, I am upgrading a budget bike to try to rival the performance of a top spec one. But I'm not just splashing the cash and hoping for the best. I'm upgrading key parts that are crucial for getting maximal performance for minimal spend and getting you, the rider, into the most aerodynamic position possible. In this episode, I'm gonna get the bike stripped down, built up with the upgraded parts, head out for a ride to my local bike shop to see the shop owner, get their thoughts on how my bike build has gone and see what other bikes are available at the sort of money that I've spent on this. Right, let's do this. Boom, episode three. Right, no time for dilly-dallying. Let's get this bike stripped down so we can then get it built back up with our upgraded parts. I'm pretty sure it's actually gonna be a bit of a breeze because we've got external cable routings and rim brakes. Happy days, let's do it. <laughs> Just like the professionals. To the magic jar of pasta sauce. jar of degreaser, because that can do its thing while we crack on with the rest of the stuff. This is a tool which literally never ever gets used anymore. It's a crank puller. It's the CCP-22 from Park Tools. Um, because, you know, bikes don't use square table bottom brackets that commonly anymore. So, uh, I have to dig this one out of the archive. That definitely smells really weird. The smell? That. Moment of truth for the Mejun bottom bracket. It's gonna work. What we'll do before we install the bottom bracket is a bit of degreaser onto a cloth, clean all that area up, and then we can put some fresh grease on our bottom bracket. I should probably trial fit this crank because um, this bottom bracket has got a load of spaces included with it. So if I need to space out the drive side um, bottom bracket cup, now's the time to do it. Drop the crank in, see if it's um, got some nice clearance with the chain stays. but I think I might need a spacer at the back. Okay, our lasagna, I mean chain, has been cooking for a little while now. Look how shiny that is. Eight speed chain, eight speed cassette. So back end of the bike is kind of coming together. It's looking pretty good. So far, so good. It's all working as intended. Indexing and setting up of the gears, I'm gonna do at the end as like a final tweak and setup. But for now, I'm gonna move forwards onto the handlebars, which on a modern bike would be a major job to change the handlebar and stem. But because we've got externally routed cable, life's gonna be a breeze. So. That is gonna be the next thing we'll do. Bar tape off, shifters off, switch out the stem and the handlebars, put it all back together, boom. <laughs> now we're on to what is a job which I've been itching to do since episode two of this bike build series, which is get this really annoying, rustly cellophane wrapper off of these handlebars. I tried to do it in episode two. Stefan told me I wasn't allowed to do it. So 
So I can't decide whether to set the limit screws on the front derailleur to work for the middle and inner chain ring or the middle and outer chain ring because obviously it's got a triple shifter on the front. I think I'm going to go for the inner and middle position on the shifter and then set it up for that. I don't know if that's right or wrong, you let me know in the comments section down below, but that's what I'm going to do. Yeah, I think a bit less, just so it sits a bit nicer when you shift into the big ring. I think. Okay. Oh, no. So after a couple of minutes of trial and error, I've worked out that the best position for the shifter to be in is the middle chain ring and the outer chain ring. That works best and it gives me that little extra click to trim the front derailleur. I've then set the limit screws accordingly to the position of the inner and outer chain ring for the double crank. And um, so far so good. I've got to say shifting from the small chain ring up to the large chain ring is not seamless, but it kind of works. Shifting back down to small chain ring works as you'd expect. So um, yeah, happy days on that. Who thought? Eight speed chain, 11 speed crank. So final piece for this budget upgrade puzzle is to put the saddle onto the bike. So I'm going to drop the bike out of the work stand, fit the saddle on, then I've run out of parts to fit. And the next thing I'm going to do is adjust and measure up this bike to match up to the geometry and setup that I have on my normal bike. Yeah, it's looking all right that. Whew. Oh, buddy, lovely. I'm in. <laughs> I think I might have to save this for race day. I'm not quite as small as I uh, used to be anymore. Watch this. <laughs> Censor that out. I interrupt this broadcast with an important announcement to make. So, having seen the comments by quite a few people underneath episode two of this bike build series, I feel like I needed to address some of the frustrations that people have with the fact that I've reused some components and the small issue of the fact that I vastly underestimated the price of the Dura Ace crank, which incidentally I did actually have kicking around underneath in my garage. And in hindsight, I can see why people are quite frustrated and a little bit miffed about this. So first things first to clear up. I filmed episode three, which is this episode, immediately after episode two. So you're gonna have to sort of hang in there for now with the fact that I do have what would appear to be the world's cheapest Dura Ace crank fitted onto the bike. And um, yeah, so just, just bear with me for that. And I can appreciate the fact that I am in a fortunate position because over the last 20 odd years worth of cycling, I have accumulated quite the selection of some premium parts. But when I get racing, that's when you're gonna to start to see some of the changes that I'm gonna discuss now coming into effect. So let's clear up some of the budget and the parts which you guys were maybe a little bit skeptical about, shall we say. And then if after revisiting the budget, of which we'll have a tally up on screen as we go, the budget goes over what I said I'm gonna aim at in the initial episode one, then I'm gonna allow you guys to suggest forfeits in the comments section down below that I'm then gonna to have to do during the race. Also, my old race skin suit. Yeah, it's out of here, we're discounting that. <laughs> so, let's go through the budget. Bike was 200 pounds. The wheels, which some people don't believe me about, were um, purchased from eBay last year for my super light hill climb bike. I'm gonna hit enter. No, uh, this is incredible. Offer accepted, boom. I've got myself some fancy wheels. I cannot wait for these things to arrive. I bought them for £300 plus postage and it's exactly the same with the tyres. They were £60. Now a quick search online and there are quite a few comparable options out there at comparable prices. So other parts of the build. Bottom bracket, £18 from Amazon. Pulley wheels, £12 from Amazon. The crank, okay, this is a bit of a sticking point here. So what I've done is I've dived onto eBay, quick search, Dura Ace crank, see what's coming up as available and um, yeah. Okay, I'm totally with you now. I can see why everyone was a bit annoyed about that. Um, I was a long way off. It looks like a Dura Ace crank. We're talking like 400 pounds. I don't know why I thought I could put 100 pounds to that. Please forgive me. Um, but what I have found is a couple of different options. I've got either 
Um, this, which is a Ultegra 8000 crank, 170 mil cranks, 53, 39 rings, 125 pounds, or I can go for a 10 speed Dura Ace option, 172.5 cranks, 53, 39, again, 125 pound including delivery. So I feel like um, I'm gonna purchase one of those in a minute and then you're gonna see that crank go onto the build when we go and actually race it. Other than the crank, next thing we've got is the saddle. Lots of people are upset about the fact that I reuse my saddle. So I've gone online, eBay, typical saddle that I can find, same sort of condition as what I've got on my bike. We're looking at 150 pounds. I've added that to the budget. Bottle, 30 pounds, I ordered that online, simple. Handlebars were actually 28 pounds 94, and I bought them from a company called Bike Tart. And then the stem. People didn't like the fact that I reused the stem. I mean, it's quite literally off a bike that I raced all that time ago. It kicks around in my garage. What I actually use that stem for is, um, I use it as a guide for if I'm cutting down any steerer tubes at home. But anyway, I've looked online. For that stem, we're talking like 45 pounds. Add it to the budget. Bar tape, we're gonna account for 10 pounds for that. Which brings it to a grand total of, providing my maths is correct, 978 pounds which leaves me with 22 pounds spare if I work on the basis of 10% budget of the 10,000 pound bike. Now, lots of people also commented about the fact that I was reusing my pedals. I feel like it's fair to reuse a set of pedals, but if you guys don't, I'm gonna have to add it into the budget. And um, yeah, you can't buy a set of pedals for less than 22 pounds. In which case, it takes me over budget and yeah, back to that forfeit situation. Let me know in the comment section down below what forfeit you think I should do in the race. Be that maybe I've got to race the bike on flats and trainers. Maybe I've got to use some sort of budget cheap jersey, like the Amazon jersey that I got Amazon um, that I got um, Ollie. Or what we're going to do is get in the comment section down below. I'm going to let Ollie pick out what one I'm going to do to keep things fair. Right, that's it. Update over from me. Please enjoy watching episode three. It's a video we're designed to have a bit of fun and my goal is always to make the best video I can. Hopefully this clears things up and everyone can forgive me and we go on and be friends. Right, see you in a bit. Check it out. Here is the finished article, the upgraded bike. I think it looks absolutely incredible. As I've already said before, carbon fiber wheels make any bike look sick. Try and prove me wrong. Anyway, run through the bike, starting at the front. We've got narrow handlebar, aluminium, lightweight aluminium stem. We've got the upgraded carbon fiber wheels. We've got tubular tires, skinny, lightweight, kind of cut through the air. We've got an aerodynamic water bottle. We've got an 11 speed chain set. We've got a cleaned and waxed chain. We've got budget speedy boy pulley wheels and the, um, the saddle off my normal bike as well. This thing is actually shaping up to be what I feel is close to like an ultimate budget race machine. And I'm actually really happy with how it's come out. Share your thoughts on it in the comments section down below. But now is the time I'm actually gonna to get to ride this thing. I've ridden to the park, so far, the gears are not great, but it's to be expected. There's room for improvement. I can tweak and refine them a little bit, but at the end of the day, I do have a slight feeling they're never gonna be perfect. We've got an 11 speed chain set and an eight speed group set and chain. Yeah, you do the maths. Good. Cool, um, this is it. Come have a look at my bike. Do you want to know like, a little story behind it? Tell me. Okay. Alex. I bought the bike, 200 pounds. Yeah? Okay. And then I've upgraded parts of it over like a couple of like episodes of video. Do you want to guess first on how much I've spent in total? You probably spent 200 pounds, so you've then gone but I bought spend, the base bike. Then you've gone and spent another 300 quid on some wheels, another 100 quid on chain set, another, well, 100 quid, no, 200 quid saddle. Saddle and pedals I've yeah. taken off my other bike. I love this. This is a nice feature. Yeah. Narrowness. Yeah. Nice speed. Thoughts on the front end of the bike? Ceramic. Nice narrow bar. I don't like the no bar tape look, and this is well, quite dangerous. Well, like that's this. why we've come to the bike shop. Okay, you come to get some bar tape. So bar tape. We now, do you add that onto the price, or? Well, we're gonna have to, I hope. 
Have we got, have you got a cheap bar tape? What's the cheapest bar yeah, tape you've got? About a tenner. Yeah, I can yeah, fit in the budget. A tenner, yeah. It's, so the original bike was £200. Yeah. Complete, ready to go. Complete, ready to go. Then you've gone... Add all the add-ons on. You've gone and spent another 700 quid, I'd say. So you've spent £900. No, you're wrong. No? This is a bit less. Well, it's more like just over 700 in total, in total including sure. the bike. That's a bargain. You've yeah. Got, you've got a deal. I didn't, I didn't account for pedals on Saturday. Well, there you go. There, there. yeah. This, this is £200 saddle. Yeah, but it's not, it's not brand new, is it? It's off my other bike. Even second hand is hundred pounds. Okay. Hundred pounds. So that hand. takes us seven, eight. That does take us to nine hundred pounds. Yeah. It's kind of right. like almost like you actually know a bit, like about, bikes. A bit about bikes. Yeah. So I did know a little bit. Guess correctly on roughly the cost of the bike. Do you want to guess on the weight? The weight. Right. Can before I touch well, it? wait. You, you, Can before I touch? we. No? How much do you think it weighed when it was in its original condition oh, first? Horrendous. I would have thought you're in kilos. Yeah. Nine kilos. More. New. More than More. nine kilos, beautiful. Was it a nice, nice set Go of on, come on, guess. You get another guess. 10.5. You close, 10.03. No close. It's actually, yeah. It was actually quite heavy. Yeah. Um, but those wheels must have taken two kilos out at least. I haven't weighed it yet, so. I'm going to go. I've got the scales with, with me. That's probably as light as a current high end disc bike, so I'm going to go 7.9 kilos. 7.9? Yeah. All right, bear with. 7.94. <laughs> Why are you like, actually yeah. guessing everything correctly? People at home aren't actually going to believe this. They yeah, feel we've cheated. They? Some real good bargain bits on here. See the quick releases, the bottom bracket and the pulley wheels all off of Amazon. Yeah. Bottom bracket, £18. £18. Pounds. It's Pull smooth, isn't it? Yeah. Pulley oh. wheels, £12. Pounds. Quick yeah. releases, £20. Pounds. That's um, pretty good, isn't it? And they've saved a lot of weight. Yeah. But we'll see how long they last. Probably not that long. No, because I know these quick releases, they flex quite a lot, look at that. Yeah. Yeah. For argument's sake, someone was coming in here with a budget of what I've spent on this, so let's call it just under a thousand pounds. Okay. What on earth could you actually buy from a new bike? Um, I've, got an, I've got an aluminium bike in stock with rim brakes. So for just over what you've spent, no, well no, 900 pounds. There we are, 900 pounds. So 900 pounds, that's like, a brand new. This is a brand new bike. Is with... it like a modern equivalent to what I bought second hand? Pretty much. This is this is modern day Claris. So compared to your old Sora, yeah, yeah. it's yeah. about the same. Um, STIs. But these haven't got the tiny little button, which is. They have a little button, that little feature there, which breaks your thumb. No, these have got yeah. a proper STI on them. That's a lot better. Um, and probably similar wheel set to what you current what you had. So. In terms of spec, it's pretty similar. That's compared. Let me go and get the scales. I can imagine this is probably a lot heavier. 10.1. So it's basically the same as what the other one weighed. Yeah. Apart from, it's more modern. You're getting something that's brand new. You've got slightly better gears because it's the newer yeah. version. But I guess it's comparable. It's comparable. So I guess if you spent the £400 on upgrades that you'd spent on there, you'd have a similar weight bike, but modern. Yeah, I guess and it is costing you a tiny bit more. Yeah, it's a little bit. Okay, right. Justin's gone to get me some bar tape. Here he comes. What have you got? So, I'm thinking about this because I know you're a man of style and taste. <laughs> no, absolutely not. How about that? A bit of leopard skin. Is it actually furry? No, it's no. just a print on. But hey, it's cool. That's this is 12 you, I know, I'll tell you what, I'll do it for 9.99 as it's you. Just on the basis? As of... On the basis that it's you and uh, you're going to race this at Castle Coombe and I think this is going to be great. I mean, that was an easy sale. Yeah, I love the, I love the leopard Done. print. <laughs> Brilliant. You can, can, um, can you fit it as well? Yeah. I gotta be honest, I'm rubbish at fitting bar tape. Tell you what, I'm gonna do it now. All right, thanks. How about that? Okay, right. I've left Justin in there fitting my bar tape. Thanks very much. Uh, we'll have a little picture of that up on screen now so you can see how cool it looks. And so I suppose it's kind of like drawing this build series to a close. Overall, I'm pretty happy with how it's gone, but I did pose the question at the very start of this series, can I achieve 100% of the performance of a top spec bike for 10% of the price? And whilst I haven't quite achieved that, I'm gonna count it as a success. I do feel like I've got close to the performance of a top spec bike, and I've come in ever so slightly under budget, which is great news, and means I've got extra money left to go and race this bike, which I'm gonna do in the coming weeks. To see that, subscribe to GCN, and then keep your eyes peeled. Now. 
If everything has gone to plan and I've done a good job in this video series, you will now have more information about upgrading your bike and where is best to invest your money to get the most performance benefits for all of your money that you spend. Anyway, if you have enjoyed this series, give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments section down below what you think of the finished overall build and also get your guests in on how you feel good in the race. So there you go, I'm buzzing, head back inside, get myself a coffee. See you later.